My name is Jake, and today I'm going to be looking at number 93 in my top 102 album countdown. And it is none other than Santana's classic sophomore album, Abraxas. So I'm going to be holding the album backwards for the duration of this video, just so you can see this cool guy. And just because, you know, I'm sure someone at YouTube will have their feathers ruffled from seeing a... Uh, a nude body regardless if it's in a sexual context or not so you're welcome also if you're wondering about the title of this album as i was it abraxas is some kind of like gem or charm and they got the idea from uh let's see there it is this quote right there I'll let you pause the video so you could take a look at it, but it is quite something. Now, if you are by any chance unfamiliar with Santana, they are an American rock band formed in 1966 with this particular lineup consisting of Greg Raleigh on keyboards and vocals, Mike Shreve on drums, Dave Brown on bass, Jose Arias and Mike Carabello on congas, and the man himself on guitar, Mr. Carlos Santana. This album was released September 23rd, 1970, and it could be considered the band's real, true breakthrough album in a lot of ways, for a lot of reasons. Um, one being it has a plethora of their hits, you know, Black Magic Woman, Oye Como Va, Samba Pati. I mean, this album is, it's only nine tracks, but it's, it's stacked, honestly. They also were getting plenty of exposure after their legendary performance at the Woodstock Music and Arts Festival. Probably one of my favorite live shows of all time from them. And also, I think, in my opinion, that the bands in the studio were much, much tighter. I love the first Santana album with a burning passion. They already were, you know, on top of their game. They somehow just managed to elevate it here. You know, I think, obviously, you know, the more you play, the more you practice, the better you get. But, I mean, gosh, I can't even imagine how much they did it because, I mean, this album really does feel like a big step up and is so much more consistent, I think. And, I mean... It, it, this is an album that definitely has that X factor, in my opinion. There's definitely that... It has much more of a mystique than Santana 1 had. And that's totally... I mean, I'm not knocking Santana 1 at all. It's a perfect record. But, I mean, there's something about this. I keep going back to it all the time. It is nothing short of a masterpiece. Now... Onto the songs. Track one, Singing Winds, Crying Beasts. This is a great intro. Sets the mood perfectly, in my opinion. It starts off very sort of mysterious, you know, with the just two piano notes and Carlos's guitar sounding like an air raid siren. And it's so sorrowful sounding, you know, it's his guitar is just screaming with passion. And yet, this is probably the most mellow song on the album, and it it works perfectly, you know. It definitely, it definitely sets you up for the real nitty-gritty here. Track two, Black Magic Woman slash Gypsy Queen. This is probably one of the most iconic rock songs ever recorded. Most of you, I'm sure, probably know that this is originally a Fleetwood Mac song written by the late, great Peter Green. Undoubtedly one of the greatest blues guitarists of all time. I have so much reverence and love for that whole era of Fleetwood Mac. I like pretty much most of their career lineups and whatnot, but that whole original lineup, it, there's something so special about it. And I, of course, I do love the original song quite a bit. However, Santana really did make it their song. This is probably one of the best covers of all time. It, I I gotta go the popular route. I'm sorry. I prefer it to the original. I just think the Latin jazz 
feel fits the song so much better. By the way, all the songs on here are Latin influenced to a degree. This one is definitely one of the, on the more jazzy side of that. And I mean, I it is the best the song has ever been recorded, in my opinion. I think Carlos understood the feel of the song very well. He his guitar on this track in particular sounds just, just so seductive, you know. It's like he's channeling a whole other world with his instrument. I mean, he can write just whole scenes with his guitar. You know, what some writers struggle to put in however many words, Santana can do seemingly flawlessly with six strings. And it's beautiful. Track three, Oye Como Va. This is originally a song by Tito Puente, I believe that's how you say it. And once again, Santana make it completely their own. I mean, I just adore the the rock vibe that they they bring to it. The sort of Latin rock instrumentation, especially the organ playing. Greg Raleigh's organ is a huge standout, as obviously is the whole band, but that's one thing in particular that I noticed on this track. And again, this is another essential Santana track. You know, it's even... I'm sure most of you have seen The Big Lebowski. This is, I believe, on the soundtrack, or is featured in the movie. And, I mean, it's one of those songs, you know, everyone knows the... Oye, como va? If you haven't heard it, You've still heard it, if that makes any sense. Track four, Incident at Neshaber. One of my absolute favorite Santana songs ever. This is a, a jazz rock song through and through. You know, it starts off with a very sort of, you know, fast paced, jazzy drum beat. You know, the whole first half of the song is very, you know, fast paced. And I think my favorite moment on the whole album is the second half of the song it starts at 252 2 minutes 52 seconds and it it's where the song slows completely down oh my it absolutely transcends music for me you know carlos's guitar is so sort of subtle but it's so emotional, and the piano playing, I'm pretty sure, you know, Greg Raleigh, his finest hour, in my opinion, it's so, like, almost brings you to tears type gorgeous. It is, hands down, I think as a band, as a unit, this is probably, this second half of the song is their finest moment in the studio. Track five. Say a Cabo. The rhythm section on this track is on fire. The bass line, hands down one of my favorite bass lines of all time. And the drums, the drum solo. <sighs> if any of you have seen their performance at Woodstock, and you've seen their performance of the song Soul Sacrifice, Michael Shreve delivers one of the best drum solos of all time in that performance and he just continues to prove his greatness on this song it is just an absolute thing of beauty track six mother's daughter santana's tone on this song one of my favorite sounding guitar tones of all time it's that like sort of distorted fuzzy but like kind of just the right amount it sounds so just angry and raw and greg raleigh this is one of the two songs he wrote on the album and they both have a very just straight up rock feel to them and you can definitely tell he wrote those two because his voice sounds perfectly suited for that particular style of music you know he definitely you can tell he writes songs that benefit 
his vocal stylings the best. And not that he's not good with anything else, but this is definitely his, uh, his sweet spot. And especially, I mean, the outro, the whole band just goes absolutely berserk. Especially, I notice Santana and Shreve are both on top of it. Track 7, Samba Pati. Not only is this one of the most beautiful instrumentals ever recorded, I also feel like this is the song that sums up Carlos Santana as a guitar player the best. You know, I'm not too much of a guitar virtuoso myself, you know, I'm not very good of a player, but, you know, Carlos Santana is everything I love in a guitarist. He is probably one of the most tasteful musicians ever. He is the master of tact. He knows what to play, when to play it, why to play it, how we should play it. He knows that like the back of his hand. And he is brilliant with structuring. Like, take Europa, for example, a song not on this album, but I, you know, it, this song starts, it's an instrumental, and it starts off, you know, very, you know, calm, you know, very melodic, subtle playing, then takes one solo, and it's like, okay, okay, then another one, a little more intense, and then by the end, he's just totally just ripping it up. You know, he knows how to craft a great build-up in a song with just his instrument. He is probably the best storytelling guitarist. Track 8, Hope You're Feeling Better. This is the other Greg Raleigh song on the album, and I mean... I would say, yeah, if you want a great example of how great of a musician Greg Raleigh is, listen to this album, you know. it. I do have a soft spot for Journey, you know, who he was a part of for the first few years. But, I mean, that no song in Journey, I think, even came close to showing his true, you know, his true musical talent. This is obviously the most, I think, straight up rock influenced song on the album, with inevitably Carlos Santana being the big highlight for me on this song. His wah tone is just a thing of its own, and you know, his solo is just screaming here. And I love, oh. This is like, I feel like if this was like a rock radio staple, which I'm sure it's played, you know, it's been played on plenty of those, but, you know, if it was like a staple like Black Magic Woman is or, you know, any other overplayed song, I can't see myself getting sick of it. It is a perfect song in every way. Track 9, final track, El Nicoya. This is probably just the only song in here I don't have any really strong feelings on. You know, it's just a minute and a half outro with just you know chanting and this sort of latin groove it's a nice little you know thing to just end the album off on you know but it's i i like it i like it it's a solid just goodbye overall if you are an avid like avid fan of any music please please indulge yourself in not only this album, but Santana's earlier work. They, in their prime, were hands down one of the great jam bands of all time. You know, they're so... I can't find anything really about this album that I can't like. You know, for from any perspective. You know, I can't, you know, see someone... See myself sitting someone down... And just listening to this album all the way through, and then someone being like, eh, it was, it was all right. I can absolutely only see, you know, them having some kind of experience that's not just totally indifferent. And this is one of those special albums where just everything came together. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching this. If you want me to review anything or talk about anything, music or film related, please, please just drop it right down below there in the comments. My name is Jake. I'll be back.